Inside our outer body, we provide quality work with a wide selection of paint. We also have a large paint booth. We also can do dent removal. Call at 701-567-4380 or stop by at 10388. Discover the Adams County Library, where adventure meets relaxation. Beyond books and movies, we offer the incredible Recreation Library, which is absolutely free to the public. Explore serene waters with kayaks and paddle boards. Enjoy quality family time with disc golf, bikes, and kites. Experience thrilling activities like tennis, pickleball, and spike ball. Unlock a world of not only recreation, but excitement here at the Adams County Library. Attention coaches, players, and fans. Here's a message from Nighthawk Nation. We as Nighthawks expect you to follow these simple expectations. Make sure to practice good sportsmanship. Please be respectful to all. Positive cheering goes a long way. And remember, we are just kids. We all make mistakes. To our coaches, remember to always encourage your players. We all make mistakes, so for the players to stay focused on the game, as coaches, you should always talk positively to your players. And remember, to relax, let the players play, and the refs ref. To all players, leave, leave a positive imprint on and off the field, court, mat, and track. Work hard, play your role, and most importantly, have fun. It's just a game. Fans, we need to see you at our sporting events because without you, there is no excitement. To make sure you stay at our games, please refrain from using bad language, no yelling at refs, coaches, and players. Maybe you're yelling positive because you can't cheer if you're not here. So remember... How comforting it is to live among good neighbors and close friends, to have all your favorite things around you, to feel safe and secure in familiar surroundings. At Western Horizons Assisted Living, we aim to provide you this and much more with you in our care. You can learn more about our services by calling 701-567-6172. The HBS Stream Team is a school-to-work program in which students in grades 7 through 12 gain real-world experience while learning about the basics of live broadcasting and providing a service to our community. Now, let us take a moment to meet one of our members who help us make this possible. Hey everybody, thank you much for tuning in today to this portion of the Streamer Spotlight where we get to meet streamers that work on the HBS Stream Team. Today we have with us Matthew Tanskahesh. Matthew, thank you very much for coming in and talking with us today. Oh yeah, it was no issue besides what happened, you know. This morning but we're not you gonna know talk about that. you know but sometimes we were we're still live and we don't know it and <laughs> things happen and that that's okay that's, that's totally happened before yeah it's totally happened before so <laughs> things happen um but so to kind of introduce yourself so obviously you're a student at heading your public school right. what are some of the classes that that you take and also like what grade are you in and all that uh i'm a freshman okay. in high school and i take uh i take i take english yeah yeah take algebra one there's mm -hmm. physical science. I take mm -hmm. facts mm -hmm. or home ec, I guess. I take graphic design and video audio production, and then I take band and choir for okay. the seventh hour. So you have a pretty full schedule the yeah. entire day. Absolutely. No and then, downtime. No, no downtime whatsoever. We got to keep that brain moving. Absolutely. So, um, You've been on the stream team for about a year now. Yeah. Right? Because we just got you the stream team hoodie, the official stream team hoodie. Yeah. Um, and Matthew's been doing a lot of work for us. He's been uh, doing a lot of football games. That's been his kind of like big claim to fame. I'm going to say he's done a lot of those late night varsity football games, a lot of producer and things like that. But also, too, the dude can commentate. That's one of the things that we learned last year. The dude can talk. He knows how to talk, which is really, really fun to hear. Um but uh, yeah, so like, what are some of the favorite things that you've done so far on Stream Team, or at least the things that you've enjoyed when you were doing it? Oh, I enjoyed, you know, being with other people, and if there's no commentator, that's like 
the best because you can make jokes and stuff, you know, and they can't pick it up on the camera or whatever, you know. Gotcha. And or or if the or if you bring up like a friend, you know, while or like a co commentator. Yeah, or like, even though we've never done that, uh, that'd be I think that'd be pretty fun. And that's something we're definitely commentator. Yeah, we're actually that's something we're looking at doing so that way we can kind of build skills experienced with new commentators. We can kind of build that a little bit. Um, so so commentating having that flexibility to have a little bit of fun right. is definitely a deal. Um, also to uh one thing that we like to do in this uh broadcast, we also like to talk about competency. And what I mean by competency is the um the badges that that our streamers earn and Matthew has a double diamond level if i'm correct you are diamond in producer and then you are diamond in commentator which means those competencies are so high we give him that stream team leader position which is really really great it shows that he is not only competent in the field that he's also a team member and helping the program uh, stay strong and helping other students get get uh get the experience and 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 learn how to do all those things so thank you for for putting in all that time and all that effort um so uh before we get into fun notes, anything else that, you know, that is your favorite part of about just being on the stream team? Uh, I like the commentating, you know, you can throw in some funny stuff, but it's, it's pretty fun because there's not, with commentating, it's kind of considered a hard job, but I find it quite easy, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no camera or buttons to press, you just talk and watch the game. Gotcha. So the, the pressure the, feels kind of yeah, off the, of you. the hardest part is the last names of people. That's always yep. a and juggle. That's well, being with the bell, we're going to wrap things up really quick. Uh, final right. notes for Matthew. You know, this guy talks with such conviction during during commentating, which is really, really fun. Uh, and then more importantly, too, the, the dude is very, very reliable. So when we have him on streams, I don't have to worry about, you know, the, the quality of the stream, that things are getting taken care of, or that if someone needs help, Matthew can an answer those questions, which is, which is really nice to have. So thank you very much, Matthew, for being on the stream team and also sitting down and talking with us today mm -hmm. but uh i suppose you better get back to class so well, i don't want to but you know <laughs> have to <laughs> all right yeah, thanks Mr. all right Jay. so we will uh we will finish up this interview here and you can get back to your regular program broadcast thank you dakota western bank has been serving this community for over 100 years every time you come you'll feel appreciated and well served we can help you make transactions which include coin orders deposits savings, ATM machines, check-ins, loans, and drive throughs You can depend on us. We are Dakota Western Bank. You can call us on 701-567-4511. Since 1992, the Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union has been serving Hedinger and the surrounding communities. We provide many financial services, such as savings accounts, checking accounts with debit cards, credit cards, money market accounts, retirement accounts, and many kinds of loans. Our goal is to take care of your money so your money can take care of you. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, we're big on you. The Hedinger Chamber of Commerce's main goal is to support businesses in the nearby community. They also organize community activities for families in the Hedinger area. If you have questions about running your business in Hedinger or just want to know more about Hedinger, contact us at 701-567-2531 or visit us at 120 South Main Street. Take the next minute to learn about some upcoming reminders and events for Hedinger Public School and the Hedinger community.
West River Insurance Agency has been serving our community with superior service for over 40 years. Our agents are here to help you with your auto, home, farm and ranch, business, health, and crop insurance needs. Come visit us at 603 Adams Avenue in the lower level of the Dakota Western Bank or call us at 701-567-9378. We are here for you. Hinkboro Machinery has a shop full of parts, service, and people to find what you need. Hinkboro also has a wide selection of parts, tractors, and equipment for the tractor to pull. They can also fix AC and heat with their service technicians. Call 701-567-7500. Graphic Attic has proudly been serving the community since 1992. Not only do they provide a wide variety of services such as screen printing, apparel decorating, and embroidery, they also have your favorite Jelly Belly brand jelly beans, pop, rain, popcorn, and gummy bears. Don't forget to pick up your Nighthawk clothing gear for the sports seasons. Stop into the Graphic Attic today for all your apparel needs or call at 1-701-567-3161. Here at Kennedy's, we provide access to many qualities, brand food, and food services. Our large variety of foods include fresh produce, fresh deli cut meat, and well-stocked dairy. Our store is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., located at 200 North Main Street. And you can contact us at 701-567-2404. What's the big deal with that subscribe button? It's not just for following our YouTube channel. It signifies much more. When you subscribe, you become a part of the HPS Stream Team, proudly supporting our vibrant program led by our students. Your subscription is a powerful statement, creating a positive ripple effect across our community and beyond. And don't forget, liking this video also sends a clear message to the students working this broadcast. It's a way to appreciate their hard work and motivates them to produce high quality broadcasts. So go ahead, show your support, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. At West River Vet Clinic, we provide our large and small animal clients with quality and compassionate service through well-trained staff, modern technology, timely education, and competitive product pricing that draws from our focus on family and community. West River Vet Clinic is a full-service mixed animal practice with five vets on staff. So whether it's your family, pet, or your herd, our licensed vets and professional staff are here for all your large and small animal needs. Good morning, my name is Naomi Salazar and welcome to the HPS Upload where we upload the latest news for you to download. The whole thing is welded. Uh, it wasn't too difficult actually. We just cut all the chains the same length on the sides. Layla Jensen hitting a three off the pass from Sitter Sidowski. Layla had eight points in that game. With a high of 62 and a low of 34. Tune in to the HPS Upload every Monday at 9 a.m. on this YouTube channel. Now let's take a look at one of our previous reporter stories. I interviewed Ms. Brooke Coulter's second and seventh hour math classes for the Desmos Christmas tree decoration. What did you do 
on this project? Um, so I got to graph a Christmas scene. So I graphed a Christmas tree with a little star and some decorations and a snowman as well. Okay. Was this a group project or an individual project? Um, it was more of an individual project, so we each got to make our own graph, but we all kind of worked together to decide like what we should put on it and like how to graph the certain aspects. Do you have anything else to add? I thought it was really fun and a good way to get to the Christmas spirit. Can you walk through what you guys did for this project? <clears throat> so we used Desmos to graph lines to form a Christmas tree shape and then we would use uh, equations to form graphs or uh, circles in our graphs to form snowmen or adding stars to the tree or Christmas ornaments or present under the tree. What inspired you to use Demos as a uh, application to create a Christmas scene? Well, I had created um, pictures with Desmos before, um, particularly R2D2, and we were coming out of a line segment um, chapter in my Algebra 1, and I was thinking, what could my students make that's related to Christmas that would be fun? And so I looked up some art ideas on Desmos, and I figured that they could make a Christmas tree, and it actually turned out really well. What educational benefits did Desmos use to create a visual uh, representation? Yeah, I think it's really helpful for students to be able to see what their lines and what their math is creating. So um, it's one thing to just graph lines and do math, and students don't always see the application for it or see how beautiful it can be. But when you start putting all of those aspects together on Desmos and it shows the students that they can actually create something that's of their own making with math, they really start to take an interest and um, apply themselves and figure out what they can do different to make their graph their own and create something of their own and take pride in it. You can use Desmos on any website browser by just searching Desmos and clicking on the graphing calculator. It is free to use. The Grand River Honey Company is a family-run business that has been producing and selling honey in the Dakotas for over 30 years. The yellow clover honey produced on our open plains and national grasslands is sought all around the world. Most honey on the market is a blend of foreign and domestic honey, where our honey is all 100% pure and natural. And we like to keep it that way. Do you want to eat and drink and throw balls down a lane? I know a place where you can go where you will go insane. The gutter is a people-friendly bar and restaurant. A place where you can take your family and your real old aunt. We love to feed you, entertain you, hope you never leave. The more you help us and support, the more we will achieve. Come on down to the gutter from Wednesday to Sunday by hanging a left at the end of Main Street. We look forward to seeing you there. KB Jewelers has been proudly serving you for almost 45 years. We sell things from candles, diamonds, clocks, watches, books, and more. We will help you find the perfect gift for your family, friends, and anyone else. They are open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5.30 and Saturdays from 9 to 4. Come on down and visit them at 206 South Main Street in Hedinger, North Dakota. At the Peacock Mercantile, we strive to create an environment in which every customer who enters our building feels the pride that we have for our business, our artisans, and our community. We offer a wide variety of handcrafted artisan drinks, from hot lattes to cold brews to smoothies. We've got you covered for whatever you're in the mood for. Come down for breakfast, lunch, or a beverage at our location in the heart of downtown Hedinger. And welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the second section of Hawk Talk. I have here sitting with me today, Jen Fordall, our math teacher here on the 7 through 12 side. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. And thank you very much, Jen, for coming in and talking with us about accountability and responsibility and all that stuff. So, You're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I was 
when I was talking about this with with Morgan, you know, I was thinking, you know, you know who else we should have on this podcast? <laughs> we should have Jen Ford on this podcast because I can't think of anybody or any other subject specifically that deals with responsibility and accountability. So thank you very much for coming in and, and being a part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, one of the one of the main things that we're dealing with right now, um, we're we're roughly. I want to say in between that second nine weeks. So we're definitely edging out that first semester and we're in the thick of it now. Right. You know, the kids realize that there is no escape. You know, they are. (laughs) They're stuck. (laughs) For for better, for better word or not, you know, yeah, they're stuck. It's like, this is what the rest of this year is going to be like, (laughs) regardless whether they enjoy it or not. So they have to start that grind. They have to start that, that resiliency, that accountability and the responsibility part. So one of the questions that I had that was related with that um, had to do with uh, why do you think being accountable is a big deal for students, especially now that it's starting to hit them hard? And how does it affect their learning in school and maybe in life? Well, I mean, as you know, Joel, I'm accountability is important to me in mm-hmm. general. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just whether it's in life with my personal relationships in school, in sports, whatever I've done. Yeah. Um, because I think. And, and I and I say this to my kids often. I think that you get more satisfaction when you're responsible. I mean, when you feel mm-hmm. like you had a say in it, um, mm-hmm. you know, when you when you created that. And I said that's a mindset that's really hard to make kids have. I mean, it really mm-hmm. is because um, it's much easier to say, you know, I didn't get enough sleep last night, or I had a game, or mm-hmm. whatever happened. That's why I didn't do well. Instead of I just didn't take the extra 20 minutes to study. Mm -hmm. But when they do do that, like you were talking about, is that wouldn't you say that that's more sustainable long term, not only just for the responsibility side, but just the general kickback? Like you you feel so great when you do the thing. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, and they'll tell you. I mean, they'll look at you and they'll be like, I studied and I did so good. And I'm like, then you deserve it. Good yeah. job. You yeah, know, they, they I had mean, that that's moment. huge. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, and you know, and I try to tell them that. And I said, mm-hmm. you know, just in life, we, we want people to show up. We want people to put in the work. We want, we yeah. want to know that they hold as much value as we do. And with mm-hmm. math, as you stated, not everybody is on board you Uh, know it's me (laughs) you know joel we've had the conversation (laughs) yeah but i mean and i think that's the hardest and so one of the first things that i always tell my kids is i'm not here to make you love math i just want you to understand its importance and that if and that if you actually try and and put forth a little bit of effort maybe you'll just like it a little more and have a little more confidence and trust yourself because that's ultimately my only goal we have to teach it no matter what oh yeah because it's one of our core core subjects that we have to teach and would you say it's beyond even well i might hold that off that might come a little bit later in a podcast in our podcast here um there's a question that has to do with that but basically you're, you're giving the opportunity to learn kind of the hard skills essentially in a sense yeah i really feel like it is and i think the most important thing as a teacher is we can't just expect the kids to be accountable we have to be accountable too and so i yeah. think if i demonstrate that every day and show kids that hey you know i'm going to grade your paper every day and i'm going to give you feedback on everything you do and i'm going to have mm-hmm. you evaluate your own stuff and when they see that that I hold value to that. I think that that's some of that, not always, we know that that doesn't work, oh, yeah. is going to rub off. And I mean, and that's that's mm-hmm. that's the most that I can do. Yeah, I'm having not... that rigidity, that, that consistency and all that stuff being uh, kind of uh, emblematic of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then with that, mm-hmm. the kids who don't, the ones who struggle, me, <laughs> okay, <laughs> can, can you share some cool tricks or strategies that you've used to get those junior high or high school students to be more responsible, to buy in when they're struggling. Yeah, and I think, you know, the way you say it, and we've had conversations just about math in general Mm because it was a struggle for you. And I think when you go almost above and beyond, Now, if you enjoyed that conversation and would like to hear the rest of it, you can go and search for Hawk Talk HPS on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and of course, our YouTube channel. Now on to the rest of our broadcast. A better way of life is better days off and better nights in, better hellos, and better goodbyes. With locally approved, financed, and serviced home loans, Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. 
At Lakeside Auto Body, we provide quality work with a wide selection of paint. We also have a large paint booth. We also can do dent removal. Call at 701-567-4380 or stop by at 10388. Discover the Adams County Library, where adventure meets relaxation. Beyond books and movies, we offer the incredible Recreation Library, which is absolutely free to the public. Explore serene waters with kayaks and paddle boards. Enjoy quality family time with disc golf, bikes, and kites. Experience thrilling activities like tennis, pickleball, and spike ball. Unlock a world of not only recreation, but excitement here at the Adams County Library. Attention coaches, players, and fans. Here's a message from Nighthawk Nation. We as Nighthawks expect you to follow these simple expectations. Make sure to practice good sportsmanship. Please be respectful to all. Positive cheering goes a long way. And remember, we are just kids. We all make mistakes. To our coaches, remember to always encourage your players. We all make mistakes, so for the players to stay focused on the game, as coaches, you should always talk positively to your players. And remember, to relax, let the players play, and the refs ref. To all players, leave a positive imprint on and off the field, court, mat, and track. Work hard, play a role, and most importantly, have fun. It's just a game. Fans, we need to see you at our sporting events because without you, there is no excitement. To make sure you stay at our games, please refrain from using bad language, no yelling at refs, coaches, and players. Maybe you're yelling positive because you can't cheer if you're not here. So remember, be positive, let the refs and the coaches coach. And most importantly, the players play. Go! How comforting it is to live among good neighbors and close friends. To have all your favorite things around you. To feel safe and secure in familiar surroundings. At Western Horizons Assisted Living, we aim to provide you this and much more with you in our care. You can learn more about our services by calling 701-567-6172. The HBS Stream Team is a school-to-work program in which students in grades 7 through 12 gain real-world experience while learning about the basics of live broadcasting and providing a service to our community. Now, let us take a moment to meet one of our members who help us make this possible. Hey everybody, thank you much for tuning in today to this portion of the Streamer Spotlight where we get to meet streamers that work on the HBS Stream Team. Today we have with us Matthew Tanskahesh. Matthew, thank you very much for coming in and talking with us today. Oh yeah, it was no issue besides what happened, you know. This morning, but we're not. You know, talk about that. you know. But sometimes we were we're still live and we don't know it, and things happen, and that that's okay. That's, that's totally happened game. before. Yeah, it's totally happened before. So things happen. Um, but so to kind of introduce yourself. So obviously you're a student at Hedinger Public School. Right. What are some of the classes that that you take, and also like what grade are you in, and all that? Uh, I'm a freshman okay. in high school, and I take, uh, I take, no, shoot, I take English. Yeah, yeah. I take algebra one. There's physical science. I take mm -hmm. facts mm -hmm. or home ec, I guess. I take graphic design and video audio production, and then I take band and choir for okay. the seventh hour. So you have a pretty full schedule the yeah. entire day. Absolutely. No and then, downtime. No, no downtime whatsoever. We got to keep that brain moving. Absolutely. So, um, You've been on the stream team for about a year now. Yeah. Right? Because we just got you the stream team hoodie, the official stream team hoodie. Yeah. Um, and Matthew's been doing a lot of work for us. He's been uh, doing a lot of football games. That's been his kind of like big claim to fame. I'm going to say he's done a lot of those late night varsity football games, a lot of producer and things like that. But also, too, the dude can commentate. That's one of the things that we learned last year. The dude can talk. He knows how to talk, which is really, really fun to hear. Um but uh, yeah, so like, what are some of the favorite things that you've done so far on Stream Team, or at least the things that you've enjoyed when you were doing it? Oh, I enjoyed, you know, being with other people, and if there's no commentator, that's like 
the best because you can make jokes and stuff, you know, and they can't pick it up on the camera or whatever, you know. Gotcha. And or or if the or if you bring up like a friend, you know, while or like a yeah, co-commentator. Yeah, or like, even though we've never done that, uh, that'd be I think that'd be pretty fun. And that's something we're definitely commentator. Yeah, we're actually that's something we're looking at doing so that way we can kind of build skills experienced with new commentators. We can kind of build that a little bit. Um so so commentating having that flexibility to have a little bit of fun right. is definitely a deal. Um also to uh one thing that we like to do in this uh broadcast we also like to talk about competency. And what I mean by competency is the um the badges that that our streamers earn and Matthew has a double diamond level. If I'm correct, you are diamond in producer and then you are diamond in commentator, which means those competencies are so high. We give him that stream team leader position, which is really, really great. It shows that he is not only competent in the field, that he's also a team member in helping the program uh, stay strong and helping other students get get uh, get the experience and, and, and learn how to do all those things. So thank you for, for putting in all that time and all that effort. Um, so, uh, before we get into fun notes, anything else that, you know, that is your favorite part of about just being on the stream team? Uh, I like the commentating, you know, you can throw in some funny stuff, but it's, it's pretty fun because there's not, with commentating, it's kind of considered a hard job, but I find it quite easy, you know, mm -hmm. there's no camera or buttons to press, you just talk and watch the game. Gotcha. So the, the pressure the, feels kind of yeah, off. The, of the hardest part is the last names of people. That's always yep. a and juggle. That's well, being with the bell, we're going to wrap things up really quick. Uh, final right. notes for Matthew. You know, this guy talks with such conviction during during commentating, which is really, really fun. Uh, and then more importantly, too, the, the dude is very, very reliable. So when we have him on streams, I don't have to worry about, you know, the, the quality of the stream that things are getting taken care of or that if someone needs help, Matthew can an answer those questions, which is which is really nice to have. So thank you very much, Matthew, for being on the stream team and also sitting down and talking with us us today mm -hmm. but uh i suppose you better get back to class so well, i don't want to but you know have to <laughs> all right yeah, thanks Mr. all right Jay. so we will uh we will finish up this interview here and you can get back to your regular program broadcast thank you dakota western bank has been serving this community for over 100 years every time you come you'll feel appreciated and well served we can help you make transactions which include coin orders deposits savings, ATM machines, check-ins, loans, and drive throughs You can depend on us. We are Dakota Western Bank. You can call us on 701-567-4511. Since 1992, the Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union has been serving Hedinger and the surrounding communities. We provide many financial services, such as savings accounts, checkings accounts with debit cards, credit cards, money market accounts, retirement accounts, and many kinds of loans. Our goal is to take care of your money so your money can take care of you. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, we're big on you. The Heidinger Chamber of Commerce's main goal is to support businesses in the nearby community. They also organize community activities for families in the Heidinger area. If you have questions about running your business in Hedinger or just want to know more about Hedinger, contact us at 701-567-2531 or visit us at 120 South Main Street. Take the next minute to learn about some upcoming reminders and events for Hedinger Public School and the Hedinger community.
West River Insurance Agency has been serving our community with superior service for over 40 years. Our agents are here to help you with your auto, home, farm and ranch, business, health, and crop insurance needs. Come visit us at 603 Adams Avenue in the lower level of the Dakota Western Bank or call us at 701-567-9378. We are here for you. Ingram Machinery has a shop full of parts, service, and people to find what you need. Ingram also has a wide selection of parts, tractors, and equipment for the tractor to pull. They can also fix AC and heat with their service technicians. Call 701-567-7500. Graphic Attic has proudly been serving the community since 1992. Not only do they provide a wide variety of services such as screen printing, apparel decorating, and embroidery, they also have your favorite Jelly Belly brand jelly beans, pop, rain, popcorn, and gummy bears. Don't forget to pick up your Nighthawk clothing gear for the sports seasons. Stop into the Graphic Attic today for all your apparel needs or call at 1-701-567-3161. Here at Kennedy's, we provide access to many qualities, brand food, and food services. Our large variety of foods include fresh produce, fresh deli cut meat, and well-stocked dairy. Our store is open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., located at 200 North Main Street. And you can contact us at 701-567-2404. What's the big deal with that subscribe button? It's not just for following our YouTube channel. It signifies much more. When you subscribe, you become a part of the HPS Stream Team, proudly supporting our vibrant program led by our students. Your subscription is a powerful statement, creating a positive ripple effect across our community and beyond. And don't forget, liking this video also sends a clear message to the students working this broadcast. It's a way to appreciate their hard work and motivates them to produce high quality broadcasts. So go ahead, show your support, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. At West River Vet Clinic, we provide our large and small animal clients with quality and compassionate service through well-trained staff, modern technology, timely education, and competitive product pricing that draws from our focus on family and community. West River Vet Clinic is a full-service mixed animal practice with five vets on staff. So whether it's your family, pet, or your herd, our licensed vets and professional staff are here for all your large and small animal needs. Good morning, my name is Naomi Salazar and welcome to the HPS Upload where we upload the latest news for you to download. The whole thing is welded. Uh, it wasn't too difficult actually. We just cut all the chains the same length on the sides. Layla Jensen hitting a three off the pass from Sitter Sierowski. Layla had eight points in that game. With a high of 62 and a low of 34. Tune in to the HPS Upload every Monday at 9 a.m. on this YouTube channel. Now let's take a look at one of our previous reporter stories. I interviewed Ms. Brooke Coulter's second and seventh hour math classes for the Desmos Christmas tree decoration. What did you do? So I got to grab a Christmas seed. 
So I grabbed a Christmas tree with a little star and some decorations and the snowman as well. Okay. Was this a group project or an individual project? Um, it was more of an individual project, so we each got to make our own graph, but we all kind of worked together to decide like what we should put on it and like how to graph the certain aspects. Do you have anything else to add? I thought it was really fun and a good way to get to the Christmas spirit. Can you walk through what you guys did for this project? <clears throat> so we used Desmos to graph lines to form a Christmas tree shape and then we would use uh, equations to form graphs or uh, circles in our graphs to form snowmen or adding star to the tree or Christmas ornaments or present under the tree. What inspired you to use demos as a uh, application to create a Christmas?
themselves before, um, particularly R2-D2, and we were coming out of a line segment um, chapter in my Algebra 1, and I was thinking, what could my students make that's related to Christmas that would be fun? And so I looked up some art ideas on Desmos, and I figured that they could make a Christmas tree, and it actually turned out really well. What educational benefits did Desmos use to create a visual uh, representation? Yeah, I think it's really helpful for students to be able to see what their lines and what their math is creating. So um, it's one thing to just graph lines and do math, and students don't always see the application for it or see how beautiful it can be. But when you start putting all of those aspects together on Desmos and it shows the students that they can actually create something that's of their own making with math, they really start to take an interest and um, apply themselves and figure out what they can do different to make their graph their own and create something of their own and take pride in it. You can use Desmos on any website browser by just searching Desmos and clicking on the graphing calculator. It is free to use. The Grand River Honey Company is a family-run business that has been producing and selling honey in the Dakotas for over 30 years. The yellow clover honey produced on our open plains and national grasslands is sought all around the world. Most honey on the market is a blend of foreign and domestic honey, where our honey is all 100% pure and natural. And we like to keep it that way. Do you want to eat and drink and throw balls down a lane? I know a place where you can go where you will go insane. The Gutter is a people-friendly bar and restaurant. A place where you can take your family and your real old aunt. We love to feed you, entertain you, hope you never leave. The more you help us and support, the more we will achieve. Come on down to the Gutter from Wednesday to Sunday by hanging a left at the end of Main Street. We look forward to seeing you there. KB Jewelers has been proudly serving you for almost 45 years. We sell things from candles, diamonds, clocks, watches, books, and more. We will help you find the perfect gift for your family, friends, and anyone else. They are open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5.30 and Saturdays from 9 to 4. Come on down and visit them at 206 South Main Street in Hedinger, North Dakota. At the Peacock Mercantile, we strive to create an environment in which every customer who enters our building feels the pride that we have for our business, our artisans, and our community. We offer a wide variety of handcrafted artisan drinks, from hot lattes to cold brews to smoothies. We've got you covered for whatever you're in the mood for. Come down for breakfast, lunch, or beverage at our location in the heart of downtown Hedinger. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the second section of Hawk Talk. I have here sitting with me today, Jen Fordall, our math teacher here on the 7 through 12 side. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. And thank you very much, Jen, for coming in and talking with us about accountability and responsibility and all that stuff. So you're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I was when I was talking about this with with Morgan, you know, I was thinking, you know, you know who else we should have on this podcast? <laughs> we should have Jen Ford on this podcast <laughs> because I can't think of anybody or any other subject specifically that deals with responsibility and accountability. So thank you very much for coming in and, and being a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, one of the one of the main things that we're dealing with right now, um, we're we're roughly I want to say in between that second nine weeks. So we're definitely edging out that first semester right. and we're in the thick of it now. Right. You know, the kids realize that there is no escape. You know, they are. <laughs> they're stuck. <laughs> for, for better, for better word or not, you know, they, yeah, they're stuck. So it's like, this is what the rest of this year is going to be like, <laughs> regardless whether they enjoy it or not. So they have to start that grind. They have right. to start that, that real resiliency, that accountability and the responsibility part. So one of the questions that I had that was related with that um, had to do with uh, why do you think being accountable is a big deal for students, especially now that it's starting to hit them hard? And how does it affect their learning in school and maybe in life? 
Well, I mean, as you know, Joel, I'm accountability is important to me in mm-hmm. general. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, whether it's in life with my personal relationships in school, in sports, whatever I've done. Yeah. Um, because I think, and, and I, and I say this to my kids often, I think that you get more satisfaction when you're responsible. I mean, when you feel mm-hmm. like you had a say in it, um, mm-hmm. you know, when you, when you created that, I said, that's a mindset that's really hard to make kids have. I mean, it really mm-hmm. is. Um, cause it's much easier to say, you know, I didn't get enough sleep last night or I had a game or mm-hmm. whatever happened. That's why I didn't do well instead of, I just didn't take the extra 20 minutes to study. Mm-hmm. But when they do do that, like you were talking about is that, wouldn't you say that that's more sustainable long term, not only just for the responsibility side, but just the general kickback? Like you, you feel so great when you do the thing. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, and they'll tell you. I mean, they'll look at you and they'll be like, "I studied and I did so good." And I'm like, "Then you deserve it. Good yeah. job." You yeah, know? They, they I mean, that that's moment. huge. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, and you know, and I try to tell them that. And I said, mm-hmm. you know, just in life, we we want people to show up. We want people to put in the work. We want we yeah. want to know that they hold as much value as we do. And mm-hmm. with math, as you stated not everybody is on board you uh, know it's me <laughs> you know joel we've had the conversation <laughs> yeah but i mean and i think that's the hardest and so one of the yeah. first things that i always tell my kids is i'm not here to make you love math i just want you to understand its importance and oh, that yeah. if, and that if you actually try and, and put forth a little bit of effort maybe you'll just like it a little more and have oh, a yeah. little more confidence and trust yourself because that's ultimately my only goal we have to teach yeah. it no matter what oh yeah because it's one of our core core subjects Absolutely. that we have to teach and would you say it's beyond even well I might hold that off that might come a little bit later in a podcast in our podcast here um, there's a question that has to do with that but basically you're, you're giving the opportunity to learn kind of the hard skills essentially in a sense yeah I really feel like it is and I think the most important thing as a teacher is we can't just expect the kids to be accountable we have to be accountable too and so I think yeah. if I demonstrate that every day and show kids that hey you know I'm going to grade your paper every day and I'm going to give you feedback on everything you do and I'm going to have mm-hmm. you evaluate your own stuff and when they see that that I hold value to that, I think that that's some of that, not always, we know that that doesn't work, oh, yeah. is gonna rub off. And I mean, and that's that's mm-hmm. that's the most that I can do. Yeah, I'm having not... that rigidity, that, that consistency and all that stuff, being uh, kind of uh, emblematic of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then with that, mm-hmm. the kids who don't, the ones who struggle, me, <laughs> okay? <laughs> can, can you share some cool tricks or strategies that you've used to get those junior high or high school students to be more responsible, to buy in when they're struggling. Yeah, and I think, you know, the way you say it, and we've had conversations just about math in general Mm because it was a struggle for you. And I think when you go almost above and beyond, now, if you enjoyed that conversation and would like to hear the rest of it, you can go and search for Hawk Talk HPS on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and of course, our YouTube channel. Now, on to the rest of our broadcast. A better way of life is better days off and better nights in. Better hellos and better goodbyes. With locally approved, financed, and serviced home loans, Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. At Lakeside Auto Body, we provide quality work with a wide selection of paint. We also have a large paint booth. We also can do dent removal. Call at 701-567-4380 or stop by at 103-88. Discover the Adams County Library, where adventure meets relaxation. Beyond books and movies, we offer the incredible Recreation Library, which is absolutely free to the public. Explore serene waters with kayaks and paddle boards. Enjoy quality family time with disc golf, bikes, and kites. Experience thrilling activities like tennis, pickleball, and spike ball. Unlock a world of not only recreation, but excitement here at the Adams County Library. Attention coaches, players, and fans. Here's a message from Nighthawk Nation. We as Nighthawks expect you to follow these simple expectations. Make sure to practice good sportsmanship. 
Please be respectful to all. Positive cheering goes a long way. And remember, we are just kids. We all make mistakes. To our coaches, remember to always encourage your players. We all make mistakes, so for the players to stay focused on the game as coaches, you should always talk positively to your players. And remember to relax with the players play and the refs ref. To all players, leave a positive imprint on and off the field, court, mat, and track. Work hard, play a role, and most importantly, have fun. It's just a game. Fans, we need to see you at our sporting events because without you, there is no excitement. To make sure you stay at our games, please refrain from using bad language, no yelling at refs, coaches, and players. Maybe you're yelling positive because you can't cheer if you're not here. So remember... How comforting it is to live among good neighbors and close friends, to have all your favorite things around you, to feel safe and secure in familiar surroundings. At Western Horizons Assisted Living, we aim to provide you this and much more with you in our care. You can learn more about our services by calling 701-567-6172. The HBS Stream Team is a school-to-work program in which students in grades 7 through 12 gain real-world experience while learning about the basics of live broadcasting and providing a service to our community. Now, let us take a moment to meet one of our members who help us make this possible. Hey everybody, thank you much for tuning in today to this portion of the Streamer Spotlight where we get to meet streamers that work on the HBS Stream Team. Today we have with us Matthew Tanskahesh. Matthew, thank you very much for coming in and talking with us today. Oh yeah, it was no issue besides what happened, you know. This morning, but we're not going to talk about that. You know, sometimes we were we're still live and we don't know it, and things happen, and that that's okay. That's, that's totally happened game. before. Yeah, it's totally happened before. So things happen. Um, but so to kind of introduce yourself. So obviously you're a student at Headinger Public School. Right. What are some of the classes that that you take, and also like what grade are you in, and all that? Uh, I'm a freshman okay. in high school, and I take, uh, I take, I take English. Yeah, yeah. Take algebra one. There's mm -hmm. physical science. I take mm -hmm. facts mm -hmm. or home ec, I guess. I take graphic design mm -hmm. and video audio production, and then I take band and choir for okay. the seventh hour. So you have a pretty full schedule the yeah. entire day. Absolutely. No and then, downtime. No, no downtime whatsoever. We got to keep that brain moving. Absolutely. So, um, You've been on the stream team for about a year now. Yeah. Right? Because we just got you the stream team hoodie, the official stream team hoodie. Yeah. Um, and Matthew's been doing a lot of work for us. He's been uh, doing a lot of football games. That's been his kind of like big claim to fame. I'm going to say he's done a lot of those late night varsity football games, a lot of producer and things like that. But also, too, the dude can commentate. That's one of the things that we learned last year. The dude can talk. He knows how to talk, which is really, really fun to hear. Um but uh, yeah, so like, what are some of the favorite things that you've done so far on Stream Team, or at least the things that you've enjoyed when you were doing it? Oh, uh, I enjoyed, you know, being with other people, and if there's no commentator, that's like the best, because you can make jokes and stuff, you know, and they can't pick it up on the camera or whatever, you know? Gotcha. And or, or, if the, or if you bring up like a friend, you know, while... Oh, like a co-commentator? Yeah, or like, even though we've never done that, uh, that'd be, I think that'd be pretty fun. And that's something we're definitely, commentator. yeah, we're actually, that's something we're looking at doing so that way we can kind of build skills experienced with new commentators. We can kind of build that a little bit. Um, so, so commentating, have that flexibility to have a little bit of fun is right. definitely a deal. Um, also too, uh, one thing that we like to do in this, uh, broadcast, we also like to talk about competency. And what I mean by competency is the, um, the badges that, that our streamers earn and Matthew has a double diamond level. If I'm correct, you are diamond in producer and then you are a diamond in commentator, which means those competencies are so high. We give him that stream team leader position, which is really, really great. It shows that he is not only competent in the field, that he's also a team member in helping the program uh, stay strong and helping other students get get uh, get the experience and, and, and learn how to do all those things. So thank you for, for putting in all that time and all that effort. Um, so uh, 
before we get into fun notes, anything else that, you know, that is your favorite part of about just being on the stream team? Uh, I like the commentating, you know, you can throw in some funny stuff, but it's, it's pretty fun because there's not, with commentating, it's kind of considered a hard job, but I find it quite easy, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no camera or buttons to press. You just talk and watch the game. Gotcha. So the, the pressure the, feels kind of yeah, off. The, of the hardest part is the last names of people. That's always yep. a and juggle. Bell. Well, being with the bell, we're going to wrap things up really quick. Uh, final right. notes for Matthew. You know, this guy talks with such conviction during during commentating, which is really, really fun. And then more importantly, too, the, the dude is very, very reliable. So when we have him on streams, I don't have to worry about, you know, the, the quality of the stream, that things are getting taken care of, or that if someone needs help, Matthew can an answer those questions, which is, which is really nice to have. So thank you very much, Matthew, for being on the stream team and also sitting down and talking with us today mm -hmm. but uh i suppose you better get back to class so well, i don't want to but you know have to <laughs> all right yeah, thanks Mr. all right Jay. so we will uh we will finish up this interview here and you can get back to your regular program broadcast thank you dakota western bank has been serving this community for over 100 years every time you come you'll feel appreciated and well served we can help you make transactions which include coin orders deposits savings, ATM machines, check-ins, loans, and drive throughs You can depend on us. We are Dakota Western Bank. You can call us on 701-567-4511. Since 1992, the Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union has been serving Hedinger and the surrounding communities. We provide many financial services, such as savings accounts, checking accounts with debit cards, credit cards, money market accounts, retirement accounts, and many kinds of loans. Our goal is to take care of your money so your money can take care of you. Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union, we're big on you. The Hedinger Chamber of Commerce's main goal is to support businesses in the nearby community. They also organize community activities for families in the Hedinger area. If you have questions about running your business in Hedinger or just want to know more about Hedinger, contact us at 701-567-2531 or visit us at 120 South Main Street. Take the next minute to learn about some upcoming reminders and events for Hedinger Public School and the Hedinger community. West River Insurance Agency has been serving our community with superior service for over 40 years. Our agents are here to help you with your auto, home, farm and ranch, business, health, and crop insurance needs. Come visit us at 603 Adams Avenue in the lower level of the Dakota Western Bank or call us at 701-567-9378. We are here for you.
Hank Pro Machinery has a shop full of parts, service, and people to find what you need. Hank Pro also has a wide selection of parts, tractors, and equipment for the tractor to pull. They can also fix AC and heat with their service technicians. Call 701-567-7500. Graphic Attic has probably been serving...
wide variety of services such as screen printing, apparel decorating, and embroidery. They also have your favorite Jelly Belly brand jelly beans, pop, rain, popcorn, and gummy bears. Don't forget to pick up your Nighthawk clothing gear for the sports seasons. Stop into the Graphic Attic today for all your apparel needs or call at 1-701-567-3161.
Duel number two over here on mat one. Okay. Okay. This is okay, a West so Region yep, matchup you. between the visiting New Salem Elmont Holsteins and the all out
Welcome back to Robert's Rinky Auditorium as we're set for the duel between New Salem Elmont and Hedinger Scranton Bison. Starting off at 107 pounds, we're going to see some different weight classes this year um, as we did uh, adjust from last year. If you remember, it was 103 pounds. They went up to now 107. So that's where we'll start off. For New Salem Elmont, we'll have Hayes Weisberger. And for the Nighthawks, we will have Nick Dobitz. So Weisberger, excuse me, Weinberger and Dobitz. Once again, this is on KNDC. If you want to watch it also live, go to HPS Upload. We want to thank Mr. Janikowski and his students for uh, having this on uh, the web stream. So again, HPS Upload, go on to YouTube, and you'll see the wrestling tournament going on as we speak. So again, Dobitz and Weinberger going at 107 pounds. Dobitz going to shoot in on a single leg. Now he's going to look at a little bit of a duck under. Weinberger going to go with the front headlock. Still no points. Now Weinberger going to come around. He'll pick up two. So Weinberger will lead it 2-0. Right near the edge of the mat. Dobitz looks like he's going to try to set up some kind of little roll. Minute 14 to go. First period. Dobitz looking for that inside leg. Weinberger getting a little bit high right now. Dobitz going to try to come back through. Dobitz in better position than Weinberger. Now Weinberger comes back and off the mat we go. Colby Steak is your official tonight. So Dobitz will be down. On the other mat we have Clay, Clay Gerhardt. So those of you watching on uh, upload, again Clay Gerhardt and Colby Steak are our officials tonight. We'll also be doing the classic throughout the weekend. Dobitz going to try a little stand up. Weinberger has the leg hooked up. Dobitz again trying to look at kind of like that inside roll. He's got to clear the arm. 32 seconds to go first period. Weinberger leads it 2-0. We're at 107 pounds. Now Dobitz going to face him. He's got to pick up his one. He's got to go beyond reaction time. So Nick's got to try to pick up that one. Now Weinberger going to come back through, still in control. So no change, position or points. Now Weinberger has him in a cradle. He's got Dobitz on his back. Dobitz has to fight off for seven seconds. Looks like he's going to do it, but not before he gets gives up at least two. Three points. We'll be back in 30 with Nick Dobitz. Welcome back, second period action. Dobitz is going to take top. Right now in a little bit of a weird position. Looks like Dobitz might pick up some near fall. Let's see what happens here as they go off the edge of the mat. So Dobitz will give up one, but he will pick up two on the near fall. So Weinberger will lead it 6-2. So Dobitz trails it 6-2 to Weinberger. Both guys are going to hook up on the head. Dobitz going to try a little shuck by. Now Weinberger going to drop down on the... Oh, nice shot by Dobitz as he intertwined the leg. He will pick up two on the takedown. Off the mat we go. 6-4. Weinberger will be in the down position. Going to be a false start on Dobitz. Once again, you get two, and then it's a point. Kind of anticipating the whistle. That's a clean start. Weinberger going to stand up. Kind of looking for that head. Dobitz needs to keep his head up. Watch out for that headlock. Now Nick sinking the hips. Now Weinberger going to pick up one. 
7-4, Weinberger, one minute to go, second period. Dobitz under hooking the arm right near the edge of the mat, tries that shuck by one more time. Now down on a single leg, Dobitz is in good position. He can't sit there, he's gotta pull the leg up. Trying to turn the corner, Weinberger in a front headlock. A lot of pressure being put on Dobitz. Now Dobitz gonna try to turn the corner again. Uh, looks like Dobitz going to pick up two. No, off the mat. Off the mat we go. Foot came off. Came back down. Off the mat. 7-4. Weinberger leads. Dobitz wants to underhook. A little bit taller is Nick than Weinberger. He's got that underhook. He's had some nice shuck buys. Has Dobitz. We'll see if he comes back to that. New Salem notorious for the fireman carry, so uh, Dobitz needs to be aware of that. Down to four seconds. Looks like that's the way the second period's gonna end. Dobitz trails it by three. We're back in 30. Welcome back to wrestling action as Dobitz is gonna trail at seven to four. Third period action, Nick's gonna take down Weinberger. Gonna grab onto the arm, try a lever there. Dobitz up to his feet, he needs to clear the hands. Weinberger brings him back down to the mat. So again, Dobitz trails it by three. He's kinda of looked for that inside roll. And once again, now Weinberger gonna hook up on the leg. Nick trying to reach back and unhook that leg. So Nick's gotta get going. Right now Weinberger just has that leg hooked up, has a one-on-one, -on -one, we call it, it's like a little chicken wing. Just doing enough to stay busy. Pretty soon might get worn for stalling. Now Nick's gonna jump over the top. Weinberger gonna come back through. Sometimes you say you don't wanna, oh, Nick's got it hooked up. He's got the Granby hooked up. He's gonna pick up two. Now if he brings him back, he's gonna pick up some near fall, which he's doing right now. So Dobitz just needs to sit right there. Sit right there, oh, off the mat we go. Feet were in, but uh, called him out. So 7-3. Excuse me, 7 6 now becomes 9 7 in favor of Dobitz. 54 seconds. We got a reversal and a near fall. Now Weinberger trails it by two. So Dobitz needs to stay busy, heavy on the hips. Neither guy has been warned for stalling, so Nick can uh, maybe put in that nice little deep waist and suck a little juice out of him. Right now he's got a one on one. 33 seconds today Do or to go. Dobitz leads it by two. Weinberger trying to clear the hand and the hips. Now Weinberger up to his feet, comes around. Dobitz needs to either let him go or st Oh, he doesn't want to get thrown. Oh, and Dobitz turns the corner. He throws in a half Nelson. Dobitz has a half Nelson. He's got Weinberger on his back. And we're looking for a fall. We got plenty of time. Dobitz trying to settle in. Looks like he's gonna make it through as Weinberger, but Dobitz is gonna pick up three. So it's gonna be 12-7, Dobitz wins it. At 107, we're back in 30 with 114 pounds.
Welcome back to Roberts Rinky Auditorium. Nighthawks take a 3-0 lead on a 13-7 win by Nick Dobitz at 107 pounds. Now we bump up to 114. Burke Vanderpool, the Bison connection of Hedinger Scranton Bison, and Gerwolf Feltz. So Feltz and Vanderpool. Feltz going to pick up two on the takedown. Nice little duck under by Feltz. Vanderpool trying to clear the hand, little sit out near the edge of the mat. Feltz follows him. Now he's going to throw in the legs. It is Foltz. Now he's going to stand up. Vanderpool going to pick up one. Nice shot by Vanderpool as he picks up one on the escape. 2 1 is the score. That first shot by Feltz was really quick. I think Vanderpool would probably expect that one. That was just a nice little duck under and got around, brought him right back down to the mat. Vanderpool, nice little single by Vanderpool. Now if he stays with it, he's gonna have Feltz in trouble. There we go, Vanderpool just needs to settle back, grab the hip, there we go. Two points for Vanderpool. So nice shot by Burke Vanderpool. He takes the lead now, three to two. 43 seconds to go, first period. Vanderpool riding on the leg, trying to do a, it's like a little bit of a half Nelson on this side. Still trying that half Nelson, nothing doing. Nice job by Vanderpool. Good control on top, 20 seconds to go, first period. Once again, the Nighthawks lead the duel, 3-0. First period action at 114. Vanderpool going to throw in a chicken wing. Now he's got a one on one. He's going to run out of time. So we've only got five seconds to go right near the edge of the mat. 2.4 as they go off the edge. Well, let's see what Vanderpool does here. Doesn't want to give up any points with only 2.4. Right off the whistle, he brings him back down. We'll be back in 30 with Burke. Vanderpool. Second period action, Foltz's choice, he chooses both up. Still no points, Vanderpool in pretty good position. And there it is, so Vanderpool pick up another two on the takedown. He now leads it 5-2. So Burke Vanderpool throwing in that chicken wing, looking for a one-on-one -on, -one on this side. Now he's gonna come around the front. Nice control by Vanderpool. Heavy on the hips, he's got the upper body keeping works. He's got that chicken wing, always working. And right now, Foltz doesn't know how to clear that arm. One minute to go, second period. Vanderpool leads it 5-2. Vanderpool still working both wrists. Now he's gonna look for that half one more time, nothing doing. Now he's got it in deep, he's gotta run it. Vanderpool's got it in good if he runs around the corner. He'll have full, oh, just waited a little bit too long. As Foltz was in trouble, if Vanderpool would have ran that just a little bit quicker. Now he's got him headed kind of towards his back, and now he's got a front cross face, nothing to it. Does Vanderpool, still working. Now he's got that half one more time. Now he's going quicker. He's got 18 seconds. Now he's got that shoulder, he's got him on his back. Vanderpool looking to put away Foltz. He's got eight seconds to do it. So right now, Vanderpool looking for six for the Nighthawks. And it looks like Foltz is gonna make it through the second period. We'll be back in 30 with Vanderpool.
Welcome back, third period action. Vanderpool takes down, he's gonna pick up a reversal. He's got Fultz on his back one more time, and he's got a lot of time. He's got 135, Vanderpool looking for a fall, and there it is. So Vanderpool picks up a pin with 131 left to go in the third period. All right, so that moves the Nighthawks up 9-0 after two matches. We'll be back in 30 with your 121 pound matchup, Mossbrucker and Hasbro. Welcome back as uh, we see that Hasbrook now is going to pick up a forfeit. So New Salem Elmont will give up the forfeit and it looks like then they'll bump up Mossbrucker. Mossbrucker will take on Isaiah Cut. All right, so here we go. Isaiah coming out against Mossbrucker. So it looks like uh, New Salem's gonna bump everybody up. So this will be uh, Mossbrucker, and I would bet then that we're gonna take uh, Charlie Irwin, and he'll bump him up maybe against Cholesky. We'll see if that's what we do. So right away, Mossbrucker's gonna shoot in. He's gonna pick up two on the takedown. He's going to look for that hat. Oh, he's got him in trouble. So he's got Isaiah on his back. Mossbrucker not wasting any time, and there's the fall. 28 seconds is your fall. So New Salem Elmont gets a little bit closer with a pin by Mossbrucker. We'll be back in 30 with your next matchup. Welcome back to wrestling action as we have Cholesky and Irwin. And right now, Cholesky, a bit of a bloody nose. So Mossbrucker bumped up. He was supposed to wrestle Hasbrook. So Hasbrook got the forfeit. And then uh, Isaiah Kuhl came out against uh, Mossbrucker. So Mossbrucker picks up a pin there. And where we currently are now, is we have Charlie Irwin taking on Kyler Cholesky at 133 pounds. So again, Kyler has a little bit of a blood issue going on right now. I don't, let's go 15 to six. Okay, that'd be right. So 15 to six is our team score. There we go, getting that blood cleaned up. So Irwin and Cholesky will be uh, having uh, Ethan Meyer will be taking on Cyrus Roseland coming up at 139 pounds. And it does say that uh, New Salem is open at 145. We'll see if they have somebody else. They might uh, try to pop in there against Trevor Daly. And then, of course, the Nighthawks open at 215, 172, and 285. So, again, those open weights. Uh, and to come back to haunt you and give up six points. So Shaleski right now, again, taking care of that blood. Here we go. 
So the blood time will stop. And we're ready to go at 133 pound action. All right, so here we go, Shaleski and Irwin. Shaleski, a lanky 133 pounder. Irwin, uh, kind of a short and stouter, if you will. Again, the normal weight class for Charlie is 127. Shaleski, oh, a little fireman's Irwin, and he's got Shaleski headed towards his back. Nice shot by Irwin. Man, was that a nice fireman. Shaleski, unfortunately, on his back, and he's got a minute 12. Irwin looking for a pin here at 133. Now Shaleski going to pull that arm through, uh, and the blood's going to save him. So let's take a time out here as we get some of this blood under control. Right now, Irwin going to lead over Shaleski. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. Welcome back. So now not only does Kyler have blood coming out of one nostril, he's got to come out of both. And now they're just kind of cleaning up the arm. So Irwin's going to lead at 5-0. We're still in first period action. And they stopped the blood time at 4.03. Never understood that. He's still working on it, so I don't know why they stopped the blood. I suppose that's cleanup time. But you get a full total of five-minute injury or blood time after that. Unfortunately, then uh, the match is done. So, again, trying to get all the blood cleaned up. Irwin will be on top. Chaleski will be on the bottom. And, unfortunately, I think this might be a trend this whole match as, again, both nostrils... And it wasn't just a little bit of blood coming out of there either, so. All right. So, again, they, they stopped the blood time about 45 seconds ago. And here we go. So, Shaleski's going to make his way back to center. He's going to be in the down position. Irwin, beautiful fireman by Charlie Irwin, took Shaleski right to his back, picked up three near fall points in the takedown. That's where we sit, 5-0. Minute two to go, first period. Irwin going to try to control the arm. Going to walk it up through and a half, Nelson. Shaleski going to try to sneak out the back door. Irwin now going to grab that other arm. And not sure what he was doing there. Now Shaleski trying to sit back through. After all that said, and there goes the nose plug. And we're going to see a lot of this, guys. We'll be back in a little bit with Shaleski and Irwin.
Welcome back to Wrestling Action as Shalesky and Irwin going in one more time as the blood has stopped shortly. Irwin going to control the arm. He's going to have some near fall points. He's going to step over the top. He's got Shalesky on his towards his back again, but I think it was back and forth. Boy, just relentless as Charlie Irwin. Half Nelson, chicken wings, working it back and forth. Right now, Shalesky going to have to try to find something that works and... More blood. So there you go. We'll be back once the bloods get stopped. Right now we stand 5-0. Irwin. Here we go. We're back again as uh, 133 pounds. Right now, unfortunately, Kyler's having a hard time controlling that nosebleed. Still got the clock on blood time. They're going to have to make that switch. There we go. Nine seconds to go, first period. After all that, Chalesky still trails it 5 0. Nighthawks lead the duel 15 to 6 currently. And that's the way the first period's going to end as. Irwin leads it 5-0. Shalesky's choice. He's going to say, oh, Irwin's choice. Shalesky must have deferred. So Irwin says, I want down. So Irwin chooses down. Shalesky going to come in from the left side. Right away, Shalesky going to throw in a deep waist. Irwin up to his base. Going to control the hand. He's going to work around Shalesky. Trying to hook up some kind of tilt. Now Irwin going to grab the legs. And Shalesky trying to reach through. Again, the length of Shalesky. Unorthodox. He's got those long legs and long arms. Now Charlie trying to sneak out the back. Still no near fall. And Shalesky trying some kind of tilt here. Irwin in on the legs, trying to sneak through. Well, potentially that's a good call. Potentially dangerous call there. Nice job by Colby Stake. Stopping that action as Charlie had his, his leg in a bad spot. Minute 21 to go, second period. It's going to be a false. Oh, official took that one. So no uh, caution either way. Shalesky again going to try to hook up on that arm. Irwin. Good base on the bottom. Shalesky controlling the arms. Minute seven to go, second period. Irwin leads it 5 0. Shalesky still trying something with that tilt. Looks like he's trying to set up a tilt, putting the arm between the legs, upper body, trying to get that arm back. Irwin uh, not allowing the arm to come back. 47 seconds to go. We're going to get lucky and make it through the period without a blood stoppage. That first period, it was uh, about four or five times. Now Shalesky looking for that cradle. Nothing doing. Now he's just going to try to run it. We call that a butcher. Nothing doing. Irwin, again, a good base. Trying to pull the arm back. 20 seconds to go. Now Shalesky, again, just going to try to step through the leg. And he's got good control of the hips. Now he's working up to, towards a half. Eight seconds to go, second period. That's the way the second period is going to end as Irwin leads at 5-0. We're back in 30. Welcome back to third period action. Chalesky's going to take top. 
And uh, the whole second period, he was able to, to ride out Irwin. Doesn't do him much good if he can't score from there. Now we're going to see a stall on Irwin. So that will be in Kyler's favor as Irwin has been warned for stalling. Minute 23 to go. Kyler needs to keep on the pressure. Right now, Irwin having a hard time clearing the hands and the hips. Now Shaleski going to throw in that half, Nelson. Minute seven to go, third period. Still no change. Irwin trying to pull the hand. Now he's going to try to come around and face him as Irwin. And now Shaleski going to try to an inside cradle. And he could have it hooked. Oh. So Irwin able to pull back the arm under 50 seconds to go. 5-0 is your score. Irwin leads it. He has been warned for stalling. They're stalling there. So Shaleski going to pick up one on the stall call. So 5-1, excuse me. Now Shaleski needs to keep the pressure on as Irwin has been warned and penalized for stalling. 5-1. Now Shaleski going to try a chin drop right near the edge of the mat. Still no change. 15 seconds to go. Off the mat we go. 10.5 to go. Irwin leads at 5-1. He's been penalized for stalling. So let's see what Shaleski's probably going to have to cut him and try a throw here. Now he's going to do the optional start. So that means he's going to kind of let him go and walk around the front. Irwin knows that's coming. So he's got to try the throw. Irwin flattens out. And that looks like that's what will happen right here as Irwin going to win it 5-1 over Shaleski at 133 pounds. All right, so here we go. Cyrus Roseland going to come out against Ethan Meyer at 139 pounds. Team score, 15-9, still in favor of the Nighthawks. So Roseland and Meyer at 139. Roseland going to shoot down on a single leg. Meyer going to pull the arms back. Again, Roseland in on a single leg. Meyer. A little bit too much strength there for Roseland. He shucks him by. He's going to bring that arm back is Meyer. Cyrus Roseland and Ethan Meyer, 139 pounds. Right near the edge of the mat. Once again, the Nighthawks will be taking on the Moorcroft Wolves immediately after this duel. So we will have one more duel for you tonight. Right now, Meyer has the cradle hooked up right near the edge of the mat. And off we go. Minute seven to go, first period. Meyer leads it 2-0. Nope. Oh, that's going to be green, red. All right, so red. False start on Meyer. He's going to be warned. Roseland tries to stand up. Now Meyer's going to catch the arm, bring him back down towards his stomach, and Meyer going to try to bring down that arm. Now he's going to reach through. He's going to try to grab that shoulder. Roseland going to doing a good job to this point. Now he's got to keep that hand clear. Now Meyer going to throw in a half Nelson. He's going to have Cyrus in trouble right here. He's got 40 seconds to go. He's got the arm hooked up, and he's got Cyrus on his back, and uh, there it is. So, Roseland gives up a fall, so we had a pin with 34 seconds to go. So that'll be a minute and 26 seconds on the fall for Meyer. That moves it now 15-15. We'll be back in 30 with more wrestling action on KNDC 1490.
Welcome back to Roberts Reiki Auditorium as Trevor Daly is going to pick up a forfeit. So that will move the Nighthawks up 21-15. That will bring out Tanner Blackwell and Colton Beecher. So Beecher and Blackwell. 152 pounds. Here we go. Once again, the Nighthawks do give up a lot as we start going forward here at 172, 215, and 285. So we will have Jaron Frank, Brody Stock still to wrestle for the Nighthawks after we're finished with Tanner Blackwell. Still no score, both guys uh, looking for position. So Beecher and Blackwell. Both guys again just kind of vying for position. Neither of them wants to make a mistake. Blackwell going to overhook the arm. Right near the edge of the mat. A minute to go, first period. Not a lot of action so far at 152. There's a shot by Beetler. Nothing doing. Blackwell going to throw in a front headlock. He's got that single. Now if he hooks up. Oh, he could have hooked up on that cradle. Tanner uh, didn't feel comfortable with that, so he just kind of let it go. Looked like he had that opportunity for that inside cradle. Let's see if he tries that again. A little bit of a single leg or a little throw by. There's that little throw by. Nothing doing. 28 seconds to go, first period. Now Blackwell going to underhook on this side. Beekler kind of backing up. 16 seconds to go. There's only been one shot to this point. It's going to be big to see whose choice it is second period. Somebody goes up or down. Maybe a little bit more action as we see it here at 150, 152. Excuse me. We'll be back in 30 with Blackwell. Welcome back, second period action as Beekler takes down. Blackwell right now needs to work up from the leg. He can only hang on to that leg for five seconds. There we go, now Beechler gonna try to face him. Blackwell still in control, gonna turn the corner. No change of position. So Blackwell, let's see what he can do from the top position right now, trying to work that arm back. It's like he's trying to Look at some kind of chicken wing. Now he's going for the opposite shoulder. Beekler up again. Nothing doing. Blackwell brings him right back down to the mat. Minute seven to go, second period. Still no score here at 152 pounds. Blackwell still controlling the arms. Beecher trying to just kind of stand up, nothing doing. Blackwell one more time, gonna go try to go between that leg and just try to step through. And if he reaches across that shoulder, he'll have Beekler charge his back. So he does have the legs hooked up in good position. Now he needs to work up towards the head. He's got 26 seconds to go. Just needs to keep working up. Nope. Stalling on green. He's between the legs and didn't try to work up. So, and again, when it's warning on the offensive wrestler, you stop the match. So Blackwell has been warned for stalling. 18 seconds to go, second period. 21-15 is your team score. Nighthawks lead it over the Holsteins. So it looks like Blackwell and Beecher are gonna go into the third period, not up at zero. 
We'll be back to see that 30, third period in 30 seconds on KNDC. Welcome back to third period action as Blackwell chooses top. Beecher tried to stand up and uh, Blackwell did have the chicken wing hooked up. Once again, Blackwell has been warned for stalling. Oh, nice little roll through. He's gonna pick up, oh, nope. He's gonna say it went through. He went through. All right, so he went back and forth. There was not a two count, says Colby Stake. 0-0 zero, zero is your score, and he's going to try it again, is Blackwell. Still a one. Still a one count for Blackwell. Now Beach is going to come around. He's going to pick up two on the reversal. Now he's going to throw in a half Nelson. So Blackwell needs to keep his head up and go. 57 seconds. He's only down 2-0. He's only down 2-0. Now he's going to reach for that leg, is Blackwell. Beecher is going to hook up on that arm and he's going to try to run it. 43 seconds to go. Blackwell in better position. He needs to come through and pick up a reversal. Right now, Beecher hanging on to that arm and Blackwell. Let's see here if he can pick up two. There's that two. So Blackwell is going to tie it up at two. Two to two is your score. Let's see if he can score here in the next 17 seconds. Blackwell needs to scoot the hips. He's got him in trouble. Let's see if he can turn the corner. Nothing yet. Time ran out, so here we go. We had the time run out as he was going towards the second one. So time ran out, we're going into overtime. Tied up at two. Okay. So the Hedinger bench just got warned for unsportsmanlike. You get one warning and the next one will be a team point. So here we go, overtime. One minute, one minute, one minute. So Blackwell and Beaker. Blackwell gonna shoot in on a single, looking for a double. Beecher gonna underhook the arm. Let's see what happens here. Blackwell needs to hang on to that leg. Beecher gonna come through and he's got Blackwell on his back. Oh my goodness. And he can go for the fall here. And Blackwell gives up the fall. So Beecher comes back through in a huge way for New Salem. Gets the takedown in overtime and the fall. That nods it up at 21 apiece. We'll be back in 30 with more wrestling action on KNDC. So, looks like the Nighthawks are going to give up a forfeit at 160 to Heinz. All right. And 172, Ingwich will pick up a forfeit. So, that'll take us up to 189. And that'll bring up the eighth grader, Brody Sott, going against the junior, Brock Norton. So Norton and Sott gonna go at it here at 189. And I guess they're not. So it looks like Norton's gonna pick up a forfeit. And 
Are we maybe bumping up Brody to, okay. So Brody's gonna bump up even more to 215 and take on Isaiah Bolum is what I have here. There we go. So Bolum and Sot. So Brock Norton picks up the forfeit at 189. And at 215, we've got Brody Sott coming out against Isaiah Ballum. And this will be the last match, everybody, as, uh, again, the Nighthawks, not a lot of upperweights, are going to give up a lot of points this year uh, in those forfeits in the upperweights. So this will be your last match at 215. Right now, the Holsteins lead at 39-21. to 21. Let's see what Brody can do here against Ballum. Ball, I'm going to do a little bit of a duck under right near the edge of the mat. Going to bring Sot right back down to the mat. We'll pick up two on the takedown. And off the mat we go. So 2-0, Ballum. Right off the whistle. Ball, I'm going to control the arms and the hips. A lot of weight here for the uh, young eighth grader to work with. The credit, Brody. So a nice job of trying to clear the hands. So Brody doing a good job. Ball, I'm going to try to throw in that half Nelson and work Sot towards his back. Now he's got that chicken wing hooked up. Brody's going to be in a little bit of trouble here once Ball steps over the top. A lot of weight for Brody. So, ball on picking up near fall points. 50 seconds to go. Sot needs to keep that shoulder up for another 46 seconds. Now, ball I'm going to come back chest on chest. Credit Sot doing a good job of fighting off his back. And there's the fall. So, with 35 seconds to go, Sot gives up the fall. To Ballum at 215. All right. So there's a fall. And then again, the Nighthawks will be open at 285. So CL Weinberger will pick up another six points as the nope. They're just not going to take that, I guess. So that's the way it's going to end, guys. 51-27. Holsteins win it over the Nighthawks. Here in their first duel of the night, they will be taking on Moorcroft in about a half hour or so. I think what they'll do is they'll get the lineups taken care of. And uh, that's the way we'll uh, uh, go into action here into that second match as Moorcroft, again, they also have a full lineup. So uh, we'll see how the... Uh, Matchups will work as we go through, and uh, there's a little bit of exhibitions also. If you're watching on HPS Upstream uh, on the other mat, there are uh, uh, some exhibitions also going on at this time, and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit to give you the rundown and the setting up of the match with the Moorcroft Wolves and the Hedinger Scranton Nighthawks. So we'll see you in just a little bit as we get ready for more wrestling action. You're listening to it on KNDC 1490, Henninger.
All right, welcome back to Robert's Rinky Auditorium. Um, I guess I was off. I thought we were going to also wrestle Moorcroft. So what I'll do is I'll break down the uh, the lone match that the Nighthawks had tonight with New Salem. Uh, at 107 pounds, it was Nick Dobitz winning by decision over Weinberger, 13 to 7. At 114 pounds, Burke Vanderpool won by fall in 131 over Genwa Faults. Uh, of New Salem. That moved the score 9-0 in favor of the Nighthawks. At 121 pounds, Riley Hasbrook picked up a forfeit. That moved the score 15-0 in favor of the Nighthawks. Then at 127 pounds, Will Mossbrucker uh, pinned Isaiah Cudi. Uh, that moved the score now to 15-6 and, and still in favor of the Nighthawks. 133 pounds, we had a, a good matchup between Charlie Irwin as he bumped up and he defeated Kyler Shalesky by a score of five to one. That then moved the team score 15-9, still in favor of the Nighthawks. Then this is where the uh, Holsteins kind of went on a roll at 139. Ethan Meyer picked up a fall over Silas, uh, Cyrus Roseland in 126. That evened up the score at 15-15. Trevor Daly did pick up a forfeit at 145. That moved the score 21-15 in favor of the Nighthawks. Then Tanner Blackwell big bin, uh, gave up a big pin in uh, overtime with Colton Beecher. So once again, Blackwell goes down by fall in overtime. That moved the score 27-15 in favor of New Salem. Then we had uh, Clayton Heinz come out. Um, he picked up a forfeit as uh, <coughs> Jaron Frank uh, not wrestling tonight, probably saving uh, that knee for tomorrow. 39-15 became our score after Gavin Ingwich picked up a forfeit. Brock Norton picked up a forfeit. And that moved it down to 45-15. to Isaiah Bollum picked up a forfeit, 51-15. And then C.L. Weinberger, excuse me, Bollum picked up a pin. Missed that one over Brody Stott at 215. They bumped up Brody from 189. And then C.L. Weinberger picks up your forfeit uh, at heavyweight, so 57-15. Once again, uh, we are not dueling Moorcroft, which I thought we were going to do. So I guess that's going to do our wrestling coverage for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for KNDC tomorrow as the Classic starts at 11 o'clock uh, throughout the course of the day. A little bit different uh, look this year. They're going to have four mats going. Uh, the varsity is going to be going on all four. So there will be two mats in the large gym and two, two mats down in the small gym. So we'll be up here in the big gym trying to get as many matches as we can uh, on the air for you. Uh, of course, it's not uh, doable to do down in the little gym. So kind of the way the mats fall or the matches fall, if we're able to see them uh, up here in the big gym, we'll call them. Uh, during the course of the day, we'll let you know what that schedule looks like. Uh, so make sure you listen to KNDC. Thank all those great sports sponsors that makes basketball, both boys and girls and wrestling, uh, able to be happening here in the fall uh, sports and the winter sports. So again, thank those fine sponsors for making everything possible. You've been listening to Wrestling Action on KNDC 1490 and again all day long. Make sure you look into the HPS upload. We want to thank Joel Janikowski and all of his students that put in such a great job. So from Robert's Rinky Auditorium, this is Dave Erickson signing off for KNDC 1490.